Hi, welcome back to Fundamentals of Bioinformatics. I'm Greg Caparaso, and this is part two of the Text Manipulation with Regular Expressions lecture. In the last lecture, we talks, talked about the differences between binary and text files. We looked at some examples of each, and we started looking at regular expressions as a powerful uh, find-replace language. Um, we talked a bit about wildcard characters, uh, and we specifically focused on the slash W character as a wildcard that matches any single digit or letter. In this lecture, we're going to start looking at some additional features of regular expressions, and we're going to start with some additional wildcard characters. Some of the others that we'll use, and we'll work through some examples with these next, um, include slash T, which indicates a tab character, slash S, which indicates any white space character, slash N, which indicates any new line character, slash D, which represents any digit, and the dot character, which represents any letter, number, or symbol except for a new line character. Now, note that I have a couple of, uh, 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 note that a couple of these characters can, in addition to being used in a search term, can be used in a replace term. That specifically is the slash T and the slash N characters. And because each of those represents a single character, a tab or a new line, respectively, they can uh, be used unambiguously in a replace term. Now, that slash S character, which indicates any white space character, is a wild card that would match tabs, single spaces, new lines, um, and so it's a wild card for any of those white space characters. The other thing that we talked about last time was quantifiers. Um, and specifically, we looked at the plus quantifier, which indicates one or more occurrences. And so, for example, if we had a regular expression that was slash W plus, that would match any of the characters that slash W matches. As a reminder, that is letters or numbers. Um, and it would match one or more occurrences of that. The other quantifier that we'll look at today is the asterisk or star character, and that matches zero or more occurrences of the character or the character set that was preceding it. That was a lot of new features that I just described. Let's jump in and start working with some of the files that we were working with last time. We'll apply those and I think they'll start to make sense. I'm going to start with the lat long file that we had last time. And what we'll try and do this time is ultimately take these pairs of coordinates, which you can see um, are now separated into different lines. And so the odd numbered lines have latitudes and the even numbered lines have longitudes. And let's ultimately try and put the, lat the pairs of latitudes and longitudes on a single line and make each of the fields, so the degrees, the minutes, and the seconds, tab separated. If you're not familiar with how latitudes and longitudes are formatted, um, well, there's actually a few different ways, um, but in the way that they're formatted here, these first digits represent the degrees, the, this next pair of digits, which precedes the single quote, are, the, are called the minutes, and then this uh, last value is, uh, which is followed by a double quote, is the seconds. Um, and so we are going to, like I said, try and join the latitude and longitude pairs on a single line and, um, and uh, uh, replace the um, spaces with tabs. And so when I'm doing this, um, one way that I will start is I will take the text that I'm trying to match and I'll copy that into my find box. Um, and then I can mark the text that I want to capture. Um, and so, for example, I want to capture the degrees. I want to capture the minutes. And I want to capture the seconds. 
and I want to capture the direction. And so that's four capture groups, um, say, for this first line that I have here. Um, and so you can see at this point, based on what's being highlighted over on the left, my, my search term is, of course, too specific. And that's because I am still specifically matching 21, 17, and 24.68, and n. And so using some of the tricks we learned last time, we can replace that with slash w plus. That will now match one or more uh, letters or digits. And so that will match that 21. We can do slash w plus again. Um, and now here, um, you might think we could just do slash w plus, but remember that would not match that period character. Whoops. Um, and so what I will do is slash w plus, but I will leave that period and then I'll do slash w plus again. Now, um, the last thing that we would need to do, you can see that I'm now matching everything that is um, indicated as a northern latitude. Um, and if I just replace that one with slash W, then that will get um, some more of these. But you can see this still doesn't match everything. And so take a minute and look at this and try and figure out why not. Um, so if you remember back to my last lecture, one of the things that I said is convenient about basic text editors is that they have a way of displaying invisible characters, and in this case, white space characters. Um, and so you can see very faintly here that there are these little dots um, in between some of the characters, and that indicates spaces. And so you can see that in some cases I have one space and in some cases I have two spaces. Now in this search term up here, I am literally matching space characters and I've got one of them there. Um, and so if you look back on that slide that I previously had, um, you will see that we have a wild card that matches space characters. And so if I, delete this space from my term and replace it with a slash s that will match a space character and so you can see at this point i've gone back to exactly what i was matching before a single space um, and if i put a plus after that you'll see that now i can match two spaces at the beginning okay so what else is going on here? Um, one of the um, issues that you might notice is that I am now matching all of these um, lines that have either a single space or two spaces at the beginning, except for one of them. Um, so this one has a single space at the beginning, but I'm not matching it. Um, you might notice why that is. Um, and so right here, there's actually two spaces um, between the 48 and the nine. But in my search term, I'm just matching a literal single space. So if I do the same thing, I say slash, oops, um, slash S and then a plus. Now I'll match that last one. But we still have a problem. We're still not matching all of these lines. Um, and so you can see the issue here. Um, so here, these lines that start with 157 don't contain a space at the beginning. And so we need to use that other quantifier that I mentioned, the asterisk, which will match zero or more spaces. Remember the plus matches one or more spaces. And so let me change that plus to an asterisk. And you can see that now I match all of these lines. So just to um, do something with what we've got here, um, let's now convert this into some tab separated values. And specifically what I wanna do is have the values, um, the degree, then a tab, then the minutes, then a tab, 
then the seconds and a tab, and the direction. And so, again, referring back to that wildcard um, slide that I had a few minutes ago um, and uh, the, the previous lecture, if I want to represent the text that I captured, um, so for example, that will get the degrees, I would use a dollar one, and then the tab is represented with a slash T. And so if I want to make some tab separated text here, I can do the following. And so what I'm doing there is I'm doing dollar one, so that's the degrees, followed by a tab, dollar two, that's the minutes, followed by a tab, dollar three, that's the seconds, followed by a tab, and then dollar four, that's the direction, followed by a tab. And so let's go ahead and do this replace. And you can see that it has now replaced the spaces, or it has replaced um, all of that other information with tabs. You might also notice something else here, um, and that is going back to those visible white space characters again. And so you can see that instead of a dot between these values now, we're seeing this faint little arrow there. And that indicates to me that it is a tab character in those places rather than a space character. So um, for now, since this doesn't get us um, exactly everything that I want, um, I am just going to undo that replace that we just did. In addition to the predefined wildcards, like the ones that we've been looking at so far, you might also sometimes want to define your own custom wildcards. And you can do this with regular expressions using the square brackets. Um, and so, for example, if you put the characters that you want to match inside square brackets, it will match a single occurrence of those characters. And so, for example, this square bracket ACGT would match one single ACG or T. Um, and so importantly, um, just remember that is not matching the text ACGT. It's just matching one of those characters. Like our other wild cards, if we want to match multiple of these characters, we would follow this by a quantifier. There's also some predefined wildcard ranges that you can use. And so, for example, these square brackets, um, capital A through Z, would match any uppercase letter. Lowercase a through lowercase z would match any lowercase letter. Um, capital A through capital Z followed by lowercase a through lowercase z would match either an upper or lowercase letter. And then 0 through 9 would match any digit. And it's also possible to negate character sets. And so, for example, um, if you wanted to match any non-nucleotide character, you would define your custom wildcard, and you would put that um, caret symbol at the beginning of it. And that indicates that it should match anything not included in those square brackets. And so this would match anything that is not an uppercase or a lowercase a, C, G, or T. Let's use that functionality here. So at the end of each of these lines, um, we are specifically matching um, any uh, character, uh, any letter or digit character with this last slash W. And so let's define a custom wildcard using square brackets. And let's have that wildcard match north or south directions. And so what I'm doing there is I am just putting N and S inside square brackets, which are then inside my capture term. And so now what this is doing is it, it is specifically matching our direction. And while we're in the process of making our search term more specific, let's add some other wild cards. Um, and so remember that I said that slash D matches any digit. And so let's be more specific here. So instead of matching 
digits or letters in these places where we know we're going to have digits, let's match digits only. And so now you'll see that I still have that same, um, that match is hitting the same thing. Um, I've, it's just more specific. And so if I had something that looked like one of these latitudes or longitudes, but wasn't exactly a latitude or longitude because it contained letters where it should contain digits, we would no longer match that term. Now, there's one other way that we can make this a little bit more specific. Um, and that is with respect to this dot character or this period character that we're mentioning that or that we're matching. Um, so if you refer back to that wildcards slide, um, remember that I said that the dot matches any character um, with the exception of a new line. And so it just so happens in this case that we are matching the dot because the dot is, of course, one uh, in that character set of any character. Um, but for example, let's say I edit this and put an X there. Um, we are still matching that because our dot is going to match any character. So the way that we would do this and remember back to last time, if we want to literally match a character that is a special character in the regular expression language, we would proceed that with slash. And so when I put that slash there, that means I literally want to match a dot. Um, rather than I want to match um, any character. And so we no longer are matching this um, particular latitude that we are still matching the others. If I change that back so it's a period again, you'll see that we are now matching that. Um, okay, so let's go back to um, where we're ultimately trying to get. And that was to put the pairs of latitudes and longitudes on the same line. And so that would mean that I want to put, for example, the latitude and longitude that are on lines one and two, both on line one. And recall, again, something I mentioned earlier about uh, convenient features of text editors. Um, I mentioned that it's convenient to be able to see the line numbers in a text editor because as you know as I'm as we're doing now we're talking about what information is on specific lines and so earlier I talked about latitudes being on odd numbered lines and longitudes being on even numbered lines um, now we're talking about what's on line one and line two um, and so you can see that having these line numbers down the sidebar is very convenient in this type of a text editor. You may also notice that in VS Code, in addition to getting the line number, we also have the column number. And so that is telling me where my cursor is. And so in this case, it's saying that my cursor is on the third line in the 11th column. So very convenient information to have. Okay, but going back to our regular expression. Now, I mentioned before, again, when we were talking about wildcards, that there's this idea of a new line character. And so if you're, if you're new to looking and working, at, uh, working with text files, looking at and working with text files, you may not be used to the idea that when you hit enter, when you add a new line, that there's a character that represents that. There is, um, and it's another one of these invisible characters. Unfortunately, VS Code doesn't show the new line characters like it shows spaces and tabs, um, but we know it's there because we see that we have a new line number um, in here. And so after line one, we have line two, and so we know that there's a new line character at the end of line one. And so the um, wildcard that we used to match that was slash n. Um, and you can see this gets a little bit funny now, um, like how this is highlighted. I noticed this earlier when I was doing this before, and I'm not exactly sure what is being highlighted, why it's highlighting this new line down here rather than this new line up here. Um, if you have any ideas about that, um, I would love to hear them. Um, but th this is now matching a new line character 
And what I want to do next is I want to match the longitude that's following on the next line. And because the longitude looks very similar to the latitude, I'm going to copy my first part of my regular expression. And so before everything before the new line, I'm highlighting and then I'm hitting command C that might be control C if you're on windows. Um, then I'm going to go to the end and I'm going to paste that. And of course, at first I'm going to get no results because I'm specifically matching N or S at the end. Um, and in this case, we would want to match W or E. And so now if you look at this whole regular expression, um, I realize it's a little hard to see the whole thing in this box because we have to scroll, but we've got our latitude followed by NS, followed by a new line, followed by our longitude, followed by WE. And so in this case, um, we now have eight captured terms. And so if we want to put this all on a single line, what we'll do is we'll put a tab and then a dollar five, then a tab and a dollar six, tab, dollar seven, tab, dollar eight, and then I'm going to put a new line at the end because I want each one of these to show up on a single line. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit replace. And you can see that that did what I was going for. And so like if we look at line one now, for example, you can see I've got my degrees, minutes, seconds, direction, my latitude. All of those are separated by tabs, which I can see from the visible white space characters, followed by a tab, and then followed by my de longitude degrees, minutes, seconds, and direction. Um, and so you can see by combining these custom wildcards um, and the built-in wildcards and the quantifiers, we can do this pretty complex um, search replace that would have been very hard to do, probably impossible, had we not been using regular expressions. Um, I also said that um, once we got a little further along, it would be more clear to you why this dot star is the indicator for using regular expressions. Um, so think about that for a second. What does dot star mean? Well, the dot character means match any character, and the star means match zero or more occurrences. And so dot star is shorthand for match for saying match zero or more occurrences of any characters. So it's a very permissive regular expression um, find term. We just looked at some examples of custom wildcards, and I had mentioned negative character sets. And so I want you to take a minute now and think about how you might be able to match columns in tab delimited text, um, or in other words, a file that contains rows of values where each value is separated by a tab. And how would you match the columns in that type of file. So maybe pause the video for a second and jot down on some paper or in a text editor what a term would look like that matched a value followed by a tab. So the defining factor of a tab delimited text file is that it contains some text that's not a tab followed by a tab, followed by some text that's not a tab, followed by a tab. And so the way that you would represent that in a regular expression would be, um, and specifically if you want to capture the values, you would have a capture group, and then you would define a negative character set that is finding one or more non-tab characters and then follow that by a tab. 
And so um, in this case, this would match um, uh, the first column of a tab separated text file and the uh, first tab that follows that column. Now we're going to look at an example of that in just a second, um, but I want to mention um, one other feature that we're going to use here too. Um, and so there are some regular expression terms that don't match characters, but match boundaries between characters. Um, and so the two of those that we're going to use are the caret, which matches the beginning of a line, and the dollar sign, which matches the end of a line. And um, importantly, a um, couple things actually. So um, first, that I want you to notice that that caret character has different meanings depending on whether it's inside square brackets or not. So I previously mentioned that that caret is used to negate characters in a custom wildcard. Um, and so in this case, you can see it's negating ACGT, ACGT. Um, but then it also matches the beginning of a line. It has different meanings depending on whether it's inside square brackets or whether it's standing alone. Now, the dollar sign matches the end of a line, but importantly, that is different than a new line character. Um, and so there are, for example, like uh, cases where you might get to the end of a file and there's no new line, um, where you still have the end of a line, but you don't have a new line character. And so the dollar sign um, helps you identify that you want your regular expression to end at the end of a line. And so putting these types of boundaries, like beginning of line, end or the end of a line, in your regular expression fine terms is really helpful for um, cutting down on matches that aren't exactly what you're looking for. So let's look at an example that uses some of those features. So what I have up here now is what we call a sample metadata file in the Chaim2 uh, ecosystem. So this contains um, this contains a bunch of data about samples that we have uh, microbiome data on. And so each um, row in this file, and you can see there's 35 rows in here, contains a sing, uh, describes a single sample. It starts with a unique sample identifier, and then it contains some information about that sample. Um, and each of these fields um, is the same for each row. The first line in here is a header line, and so it's describing what the columns are. Um, and so, for example, it's telling us the first column is the sample ID, the second column is the barcode sequence, the third column is the site on the human body where this sample came from, um, then the year, month, and day of the sample collection, and so on. Uh, and so um, this sample metadata file, again, contains data about samples that we've collected microbiome sequences on. And so these, file, these types of files are very common in bioinformatics, and there's often manipulation that you need to do of these files that, um, will, uh, uh, that will facilitate some type of an analysis that you're doing. Um, and so what I want to do here is explore how we might change the order of the columns in this file. Um, and so maybe what we'll do is we will um, change the order, just to keep it simple, of the barcode and the body site columns. Now, one thing that you should notice, again, um, just pointing out some of the features of a text editor, this is a tab separated text file, like I said. So tabs have special meaning here. They separate columns. Um, you can see, for example, that sometimes our columns are going to contain spaces in them. And so 
if we did not have a text editor that showed us visible spaces, we might not know whether this was a tab separating these two values or whether this was a space separating these two values. And so you can see why it's useful to be able to um, visualize those white spaces. But let's do some search replace on this. And so, like I said, we are going to um, we are going to try and match the barcode and the body site columns and reverse their order. And so from the, um, uh, from the slides that we were just looking at, what I said is um, if we want to match tab separated data, we would start with a capture group um, we would define a custom wildcard, and in that wildcard, we would say we want to match one or more non-tab characters. Oops, one or more non-tab characters, followed by a tab character. And so you can see this is now matching a lot of information in this file. Um, in fact, it's matching each one of these columns followed by the tabs. Um, the only column that it doesn't match is the last one because there is no tab at the end of that line. Um, at the end of the line, we end up having a new line character, not a tab. And again, you can see that because there's not one of those little arrows in there. Um, and so if we want to match, so this match would get us one single column. Um, if we want to extend that so that we match two columns of data um, and we want to keep it easy, what we can do is we can copy that and we can paste it. And that's now going to match two columns of data. And if we do that again, we can paste it and that's going to match three columns of data. And you'll notice now that it's not matching the ends of these lines anymore because, um, for example, this we're now saying we need to match three columns of data followed by a tab. And this ends at, uh, or sorry, if we have one column, two column, three column, there's no tab at the end there. And so we can't, um, there's no match because uh, there's not a trailing tab. Um, now, there's a little bit more of a challenge here though we're not quite done yet because we want to specifically match the first three columns if we're going to reverse the order of those columns but you can see that we are matching um, further into um, each row than just the first three columns and so that's where those boundaries come in and so recall that the caret symbol when it's outside of square brackets indicates a match at the beginning of a line. And so if I add that caret symbol in, that's going to match only up to um, the uh, end of the third column, because I'm saying that the match has to start at the beginning of a line. And so now I think you can probably imagine how we would swap the order of those in our replace term. So we would do dollar one, which is going to be the first column, followed by a tab, then dollar three, which is the body site column, followed by a tab, and then dollar two, which is the barcode column, followed by a tab. And so let's hit replace and see if that worked. Yep, so sure enough, um, we now have sample ID, followed by body site, followed by barcode sequence. And so that is um, yet another powerful feature of regular expressions. Okay, so let's look at one more example. And this is um, an important, uh, a feature of regular expressions that's important to understand, and that is the concept of greediness. So quantifiers like the plus or the asterisk are going to match the longest string of text that matches a pattern. 
Uh, and so if a pattern can either match, um, say, a, a string that is three characters long or 10 characters long, it's going to match the one that's 10 characters long. And so we'll spend a minute now looking at where that's important and how you can manage that. And so imagine you have a collection of sequences and you want to remove poly A tails. Um, and so what a poly A tail is um, in, uh, in terms of the sequence is a string of multiple A's at the end of a sequence. Um, and so you might imagine um, that if you were to do something like, um, like, so we just want to do a replace where we get rid of that poly A tail, um, you might imagine, let's use one of our um, uh, custom blocks here. Um, and so we will define ACGT um, and we'll say um, one or more of those. And, um, oh, and, and actually I just noticed um, a feature of uh, the VS Code regular expression language that's a little bit uncommon, um, and that is that it, um, will, uh, not, it will not be case sensitive unless you tell it to. And so I'm just going to click this um, capital A lowercase a. Um, and that will make sure that it is only going to match um, capital letters as I have specified in here. You'll notice when I unclick that, it was highlighting this C, and I don't want it to work with that C. Um, okay, so this pattern is now matching um, this entire string. Um, and then imagine I had a star at the end of it. Um, and then what I want to do is I want to replace that with $1. And so what I'm going for here is that this will, um, say, match this entire sequence minus these last A's. Or that it will, the replace will be this entire sequence minus these last A's. Um, and so that should end in GTTG. And so I'm going to go ahead and do replace. And you can see that nothing happened here. Um, and so the GTTG is still there. And then I've got this string of A's following it. Um, now, you might say, oh, well, that's because I used an asterisk here. And the um, asterisk indicates zero or more. And so um, it just matched zero of those. So if I were to instead replace that with a plus, um, let's do that again. You can see what happened there is it matched exactly one A at the end. So recall that the plus means one or more. It matched one A, not all, what is that, seven of these that I previously had. And so let's hit undo and get that A back. Um, and so what the issue is here is that this plus is going to match the longest string of text that it can while still letting the entire pattern match. And so in this case, what is being captured, what's being matched by this first portion is the beginning of the sequence up to that last A. And then that last A is getting matched by the A plus at the end. And so the way that you would handle this in a regular expression is you would follow the plus with a question mark. And so what that question mark is going to do is it is going to say, instead of matching the longest string possible, match the shortest string possible. And so if I do that, and then I again replace with $1, and I hit return, um, you can see, actually, I'm not exactly sure what just happened there. Oh, I see what happened. Okay, so it's matching this CCAA because that is the shortest term in here that now technically matches this because it's matching two C's, so it's C. C, 
and then two A's. And so it's just matching what's highlighted there. When I replace, um, you can see, yeah, so what seems to be happening is it has multiple matches to this pattern. And so as a result, um, we are getting um, a different sequence and it's hard to see exactly what was happening in here. Um, but it's basically removing um, anytime you have um, one or more A's, C's, G's, and T's followed by one or more A's. And so you can see that's why there's no A's in here. Um, but in any case, that is still not quite getting us what we're looking for. Um, and so the um, next thing that we can do is we can say, well, wait a minute. We want those A's that we're matching to be at the end of a line. And so in order for that, um, in order to specify that, recall that we can use another one of those boundary characters, which is the dollar sign character. And so now what this is going to do, um, and you can see it just highlighted the whole sequence there, but now starting um, where the match begins, it's going to match um, the shortest sequence that it can that's followed by um, one or more A's. Um, provided that that ends at the end of the line. Um, and so there is um, one of these. So we have these A's that are matching at the end of the line, um, and then all of these characters um, going up to it is um, uh, what is going to be part of that, uh, that find and replace term. And so if I do a replace now, you can see that that is just getting rid of the A's at the end of the line. Um, okay, so that shows how you control the greediness of your regular expression. And that's where I'm going to end the regular expression demos. I do just want to mention one last feature before we wrap up, um, and that is custom quantifiers. And so we looked at the quantifiers uh, plus and star, uh, and those again match one or more or zero or more characters. Um, just like you can define custom wildcards, you can define custom quantifiers. And so if you want to, for example, match exactly three A characters, you could um, use curly braces and that will um, let you say you want to match um, exactly three in this first example. The second example says um, at, at least three and at most five. And then that last example says at least three. And so if you need to be specific about how many times you're matching, you can use one of those custom quantifiers. Um, and so I just want to leave you on this, um, talking about how to produce robust searches with regular expressions. Um, and so like you actually just saw with one of mine, um, where, you know, I couldn't exactly figure out what was going on. That definitely happens with regular expressions. Sometimes it happens really in all aspects of interacting with programming languages or even computers. You know, sometimes things just don't do, um, what you think they should. Um, so sometimes your queries are, are going to fail. And there's really the way I think about it is there's two ways that they can fail. One is that they won't produce out any output. Um, and so in other words, you're, um, you're going to try and do a find your place and it just won't find anything. The other is that it could produce incorrect output. And so in that case, you're doing a find replace and you think everything worked, but sometimes your pattern is matching something that is not what you intend to match. And it's making a change that is not the change that you intend. Um, now that is really the worst case scenario because that could result in errors sneaking into your data analysis workflow. And so in general, when you're building computational tools, you want to think about um, having them fail 
in a way that is going to be like what I describe as loud. So produce an error message when something fails. Um, in the context of regular expressions, you know, we're not creating error messages, but if you design your searches in such a way that you're very explicit, um, and so for example, doing things like matching full lines by using the caret and the dollar sign in your search query, um, that helps you um, make sure that you're only matching specifically what you want to match. Um, so a good example, um, for example, if you're trying to find records or if you're trying to find lines that start with a greater than symbol, um, so for example, those header lines in FASTA files, um, indicate that that greater than symbol is supposed to be at the beginning of a line. And that will prevent you from matching greater than symbols that show up in other places. Um, also, your um, software may tell you the number of matches that were made. Check that and see if it seems reasonable. Um, and so, for example, if you know, if you're trying to match, um, say, one pattern per line, um, you know how many lines are in the file, or you can find out how many lines are in the file. So figure out if that number of matches was reasonable. And so it gives you a way to um, sort of check your work. Um, okay, so I mentioned in the beginning that the um, lecture material that I've been going over in these two lectures is derived from Practical Computing for Biologists and specifically chapters two and three of that book. Um, again, I just want to recommend that if you are interested in these ideas, you're interested in getting more into bioinformatics or data science, um, this is a great book. And so I recommend buying a copy and um, working through it. Okay, so that's everything I've got for regular expressions. Good luck.